We have a little video that we're going to show to you first, and some of the information in it you'll probably hear me repeat afterwards as well. But uh, I, it's, it's really nice, and this guy from Greenwood, the uh, Lander University, came and made this video for us, and uh, he's just been so gracious to the Rosemont Preservation Society because he believes in what we're doing. So we're just going to do that first, and then I'll talk to you a little bit. About two and a half miles southwest of this historical marker, a granite monument stands on the site of Rosemont, birthplace and home of Anne Pamela Cunningham, founder and first regent of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association of the Union. Through her efforts, Mount Vernon was purchased by the association in 1858, and Washington's home was restored and maintained for posterity. We're at the home site of Ann Pamela Cunningham, a daughter of Lawrence County who was born on this site in 1814. She was responsible for the preservation and the restoration of Mount Vernon, the home of George Washington. She was the first regent of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association who had its beginning here in Lawrence County at the Liberty Springs Presbyterian Church. That's where the group of ladies came together to uh, give their donations and they raised $200 that night. And then in 1856 is when they actually paid for uh, Mount Vernon. They had worked very hard traveling all over the place, and there was a senator that got interested in the project, and he helped give speeches and raise money uh, in order to purchase Mount Vernon as well. She retired from the Mount Vernon Ladies Association in 1874. She needed to come home back here to Rosemont to help her mother, who was ill with the, uh, the duties of the plantation. She passed away in May of 1875 here at Rosemont, and she is buried at the Presbyterian Church in Columbia. The Rosemont Plantation was a land grant from the British Crown to Patrick Cunningham, who was Anne Pamela Cunningham's grandfather. The house was built around 1790, and then Robert Cunningham married Louisa Bird from Virginia um, in the early 1800s. And Pamela was born in 1816. She had two brothers, uh, one died as a baby, and then John, her uh, younger brother, served as an officer in the Civil War. And Pamela lived here with her mother and father and brothers. She um, fell from a horse when she was a young girl and was an invalid most of her life. This plantation, they say, we don't know for sure, covered about 2,000 acres here and um, had extensive gardens. So we think the garden probably began about 1820 and uh, she had a beautiful, beautiful rose garden here. People came from all over the state to see her roses. She bought plants from the Pomeria Nursery at Pomeria. The uh, four little plants of boxwood that you can see over there were English box, and they were planted at the corners of the steps, which was the entry into the house. The house would have been located a little bit further back to my left. The alleyway of uh, tree box came right up to the front steps and there was a circle where the carriages came in. There were lots of little outbuildings. The library was located over to my right. 
The kitchen would have been located behind the manor house, back behind me to the left. And there was an alley of crepe myrtles from this portion of the house that ran um, forward. There was an alley of cedar that ran from behind the house all the way down to the river. And uh, then, of course, there were roses and other plants just everywhere. My name is Ernie Seegers. I'm a member of the, um, uh, the Rose Rosemont Preservation Society worked for a long time for Lawrence County and uh, have had an interest in this for a long time. I grew up over in Cross Hill, uh, about four or five miles from here. We've been familiar with this for a, for a good many years. Uh, behind me, you can see Lake Greenwood, uh, which did not exist when this house was here in the, in the, in the 20s and burned in 1930. The Saluda River uh, ran its course this, to, the, to the south. And uh, the house, which we're not far from the site, uh, actually faced away from the river. It faced east toward, uh, actually toward, uh, toward Highway 221. Men of some note visited the uh, Rosemont plantation, including uh, Joel Poinsett, who was a, got better known up in the Greenville area. He was a uh, ambassador to Mexico. He, the Poinsettia flower is, is, is named for him. I think he brought, I think, I think he brought it from Mexico here. Uh, Governor Benjamin Perry, uh, who's also a Greenville County native, visited here. And the Cunningham family was very prominent in this area. This was a working up country plantation of several thousand acres back in the back in the day. And um, in some of the uh, histories I've read, they would take take some of their uh, products to Hamburg, which would be west of here. And, and Hamburg doesn't exist anymore. It was, it was an old uh, Savannah River port right across right across the river from Augusta. And rather than going toward Columbia with the with the Congaree and Going to Charleston to port, they went. They went toward Georgia and uh, and, and use that for uh, as, a, as a way to export goods. There is a slight connection between Lawrence County and Greenwood County uh, with Ann Pamela Cunningham. The family during the Civil War was told that uh, Sherman might be coming through this area, so they left their home site, crossed the Saluda River and went over to Cokesbury in Greenwood County. And they spent a couple of weeks maybe there. And there is a beautiful, large portrait of her that hangs in the Cokesbury uh, building. I believe that his, it was Ann Pamela's nephew who uh, inherited from Ann Pamela. And his name was Hugh Banks. And he added Cunningham to his name, he, his, uh, he was related to the Cunninghams, but uh, his name was not Cunningham. But he added it so that he would be a Cunningham relative here on the property. In 1930, uh, the house burned under suspicious conditions. The suspicious nature of the fire has been a point of conjecture around here for a long time in this part of the country. I grew up close to here. And uh, they, uh, my, my mother, who lives in Lawrence, I'm 94 years old, and uh, she grew up toward Lake Greenwood in, in Cross Hill, even though the, the lake didn't exist at that time. And they could see across the way, they, they could see the, the, the glow of the fire at, at, at Rosemont. There were, um, uh, there were things from the house that were in the woods, pieces of furniture and and somehow they got from point A to point B. Well, these, these articles that they found in the woods would have burned in the fire had they been in the house. I think among the people that lived in this area, there was strong suspicion that there was foul, foul play involved with the Jones death and with, and with the house burning. But the property was purchased by the Niles Clark family of Waterloo, and they kept this particular part of that purchase intact. They decided they needed to do something with it so it wouldn't be so spread out between all their children. And they knew that uh, Miss Libby uh, Rhodes in Lawrence was very, very interested in this property. She had done lots of stories and pictures on it. So he said something to her wondering if she or a group of ladies would like to buy this four and a half acre home site. Mr. Clark agreed to sell us 
this four and a half acre home site. And he donated half of the asking price as a gift to the Rosemont Preservation Society. And these uh, seven people signed a mortgage for the rest of the amount of the property and we had no earthly idea how we were gonna pay for it. But one year later, we received a grant from the South Carolina Conservation Bank, which totally paid off our mortgage. Mount Vernon uh, loaned Dean Norton to us, who was the horticulturist from Mount Vernon, to come down and help us see what needed to be done to the boxwoods. They were, their trees now, they are so large. So he uh, pruned them out in the manner that they should be. We didn't shorten them, we just shaped them up a little bit. And after he finished that pruning job is when we could actually see that the alley ran up to the front of the house. At some point, the Rosemont Preservation Society hopes to footprint the house and the library and the uh, kitchen so that when guests are here walking the paths, they can see where these buildings were. The purchase price was $200,000. The nephew of George Washington offered it to the state of Virginia and they declined. He offered it to the United States and they said, no, we don't want it either. So this little invalid lady from South Carolina purchased it and helped in the restoration of it. According to the website mountvernon.org, when Anne Pamela Cunningham established the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, the association became the first preservation organization in the United States. Cunningham was inspired by a sense of patriotic duty to make the bold choice to enter the public arena in an effort to save George Washington's home. Americans had a responsibility to their country and to Washington's memory, Cunningham argued. The first regent was involved in every aspect of the organization, and she proved to be a clever leader who used print media to inspire women to join the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. The ladies were relentless and successful in their effort to reach people in small towns and large cities and raise funds to save Mount Vernon for future generations. In the spirit of the preservation of Mount Vernon, the Rosemont Preservation Society has been hard at work preserving Rosemont, the home of Anne Pamela Cunningham. In the spring of 2020, the South Carolina Conservation Bank awarded a grant toward the purchase of 123 additional acres at Rosemont. Mr. and Mrs. Richard and Evelyn Clark Lorenz donated 25% of the purchase price of 117 acres in the spring of 2020. Mrs. Adrian Mars, former vice regent of Wyoming, donated a very generous amount for the Rosemont expansion. Mrs. Jean Sherrill, Vice Regent for North Carolina, donated a very generous amount for the Rosemont expansion. In addition, many individuals helped get the Rosemont Preservation Project off the ground with donations of $1,000 or more. This unassuming piece of property is very important in the overall expansion plan for Rosemont. According to Rosemont Preservation Society board member, Jim Meeks, this area will be used for parking and it is the only location that would not interfere with the home site. From this parking area, there will be two paths. The first path will run about a mile and a quarter and it will include walking paths. The second path will be a short walk to the home site. Uh, entrance way down to the home site 
down this road, they park and they could walk on down and you could have your signs or whatever, so, telling some stories. And this was the alley uh, lined with box woods and it, they're still here uh, and minimum 150 years old. Carriages come up here, drop folks off. Uh, and this is the, with the older uh, large boxwoods that uh, flanked each side of the driveway coming up. Uh, one of the original trees, it's Jose Orange, they call it, better known as the horse apple. It's, they used it too. Also, it's got uh, bramble thorns on it, almost like a black locust. And they used it a lot of times for actually fencing uh, before they had wire fence and all. Then it's uh, got fruit, like I said, not quite as big as a grapefruit, and uh, horses, they say, love it, but never tried it. <laughs> and there's walnut trees, there's black walnut trees. Walnut trees are very slow-growing trees, so it's almost sure it was 150 more years old. Standing in sharp contrast to the remarkable history preserved at Rosemont, is this 20-acre clear-cut piece of land just a short walk away. According to Jim Meeks, this scene emphasizes the important work already done to preserve Rosemont, but the work is not finished yet. I mean, this was a lady that was the uh, first historical society that had ever uh, been and she started it in America and also saved George Washington's home place, yet and still she was almost an invalid. But, I mean, uh, the thing too, back in those days, a woman's name could not even be in a newspaper unless, or not supposed to be, unless she was uh, at her birth or her death. But here this lady did it under a assumed name to raise uh, this kind of money and to save that place. Uh, a lot of people should really take note and, and try to at least uh, show respect and preserve her home place. <clears throat> a lot of what I have in my notes, you all have already heard via the, well, sorry, I forgot about that thing, the uh, video, but there are a few little things that, uh, that weren't mentioned in the video, and I'm going to, tell you about those and probably skip over uh, the ones that you've already heard. i uh, like to thank the Genealogy Society for letting me talk about one of my favorite subjects and Pamela Cunningham and Rosemont. I tell people that, uh, I tell them, tell folks about Aunt Pamela if I could get them to stand still for five minutes then they're going to hear about Ann Pamela and Rosemont. The Cunninghams actually came to America in 1681 from Scotland, and in 1769, Patrick Cunningham and his family settled in what is now Lawrence County on the land grant property from the King of England. This property was located on the banks of the Saluda River, <coughs> which is now Lake Greenwood near Waterloo and Cross Hill. There is a Revolutionary War connection uh, with Patrick and his brothers. And of course they were loyalists because of the land grant. If King had given me all that land, I might have been fighting for him too. But anyway, there were consequences for this after the war, and they were sent, uh, I think it was Florida, sent to Florida. But uh, they made amends, and their property was returned to them. And as the video said, Patrick was Ann Pamela's grandfather. Patrick's son, Robert, inherited the property, and he married Louisa Byrd of Virginia. And this makes the connection between the Cunningham family and George Washington's family, because Louisa's, and Pamela's mother, Louisa, 
her mother's sister was asked by George Washington to marry him, and she told him no. So, Ann Pamela was born on August the 15th, 1816, on the Rosemont Plantation. The house was said to be the finest in the upstate, and it burned under suspicious circumstances in 1930. We <coughs> had a founding board member of the Rosemont Preservation Society that used to say if he ever won the lottery, he'd build a house back for us. Um, and we told you about uh, the guy that died there. That was Hugh Banks Cunningham, and he was a nephew of Ann Pamela, and he inherited the property from Ann Pamela. There were extensive gardens at Rosemont, and Louisa was the gardener. Her home was her gardens were considered to be very prominent in the upstate, and Joel Poinsett and Governor Perry uh, visited there quite often. They didn't just come once, they came lots of times. The most visible things that are there now are the tree boxwood alley, magnolia, crepe myrtle, and um, there are a few other trees that we think are, <coughs> I don't think they're the original tree, like the Osage orange that Jim spoke of. I think that is a seedling of the original tree because it's not very big around, and I just don't think it's big enough or old enough to have been an original but it is a seedling of one that she put there. That conjectural drawing that I showed of what the gardens probably looked like was done by Christy Bowers, who did an archaeological study on the property in the 1990s. On a trip down the Potomac River in Virginia, Louisa saw Mount Vernon. And as the custom was in that day, when the boats went by Mount Vernon, they would slow down and ring the ship's bell, and everybody that was on board would go out and pay homage to uh, Mount Vernon. Well, she was just devastated by the, the uh, condition that it was in, and that's when she wrote that letter back to Ann Pamela here in Lawrence to tell her that if the men of this country couldn't take care of the home of our first president, then maybe it was time the ladies gave it a try. So I won't repeat all of that about the way the Mount Vernon Ladies Association was formed, uh, but it was, and they raised the money and purchased the property. And Pamela was the first regent and they continued to raise money all during the Civil War for the uh, restoration of the house, even after they got the $200,000 paid. Then they still had to raise money in order to restore it. And uh, she did all of that, too. Uh, Mount Vernon is owned by a group of ladies. It is not a national park. A lot of people think that it is. It receives no government money. It's privately funded. And the Dean Norton, the guy that uh, came and helped us prune our boxwoods, told me a story when he was here last about this group of national park guys that came flooding in on Mount Vernon, and they were going to block off all the entrances so that nobody could get on the property because they thought it was a national park. And whoever they, <coughs> excuse me, whoever they talked to that day told them that if they tried to barricade the entrance to Mount Vernon, they were going to have to deal with about 22 women. So the guys thought about it a little bit and put the barricades back in the truck and they left. But I thought that was so funny that even the National Park people 
didn't know that it was not a national park. Everybody just assumes that it is. The Mount Vernon Ladies Association has been very generous with the Rosemont Preservation Society in giving us an ongoing um, donation each year to help with the maintenance down there. They loaned us Dean Norton to help with the pruning of the uh, boxwood. When we, <coughs> when we uh, formed the uh, Rosemont Preservation Society in December of 2007, like I said, we signed a mortgage and we didn't have a clue how we would go pay for it. I went home that day and told my husband, Ted, do you know what I just did? I signed a, signed a mortgage for X amount of dollars. <laughs> he just smiled and said, well, you work it out. And we did. We wrote a grant and it was paid for. Then uh, prior to 2019, the Clark family, there were four siblings, and they decided that they wanted to disperse of the property that they had down there that was all in the, all four of them's names, so that when they passed away, the uh, many children would not have that to deal with. So they divided up the land into home sites and began to sell lots. And before this occurred, that's when he approached Miss Libby Rose to see if she knew of anybody that might like to purchase the four and a half acres that was where the house was. Of course, she found some crazy women and two men, and we did. We bought it. Then in 2019, uh, it became, well, we asked the Rosemont Woods LLC, and that was the Clark family company that owned the land. <coughs> if we could buy some more lots that surrounded our four and a half acres, they agreed to that, and we bought seven lots from them. We bought one from a neighbor who had purchased it so that nobody built a house behind him. And then we bought an additional 116 acres, which was a surprise to us because we really weren't even thinking about that, but it just became available. They gave us a 25% discount off the purchase price as a donation to the society. So once again, we went to the South Carolina Land Bank and they helped us out and everything's paid for. Uh, in closing, I would like to read to you a portion of a letter <coughs> written by Ann Pamela in 1871. This was after she had come home from Mount Vernon and was at Rosemont with her mother, who was in very bad health. In this little bit of this letter, she tells about touring the gardens with her mom. Our home, no home for us anymore. Oh, how I felt it when on that last Sabbath at Rosemont, I went around the grounds with my mother by my side side, supported by her walking stick, and a little girl bearing a chair for me so that I could rest every few steps. She had really bad back problems after she fell from the horse at a young age. I took a long look at each turn in the walks and the shrubbery a farewell, for I felt that I could never again fear to go over these spots to be given up to desolation, till someone more fortunate than our family claimed them as their own. 
I like to think that Ann Pamela would approve of the Rosemont Preservation Society and its efforts to preserve her home site. We are a 501c3 organization and gladly accept donations. We are now trying to get a master plan together to make pathways. There are some pathways down there that we know exactly where they were. Louisa put them there when she built the garden and we want to uh, get those repaired and brought to life. We also um, want to do the parking area in the area that uh, they showed in the last part of the video. And that property is part of what we acquired in 2019. Now we have a place to park without getting on the home site strip of land. <coughs> and we're going to footprint where the buildings were, like the house and the library and the kitchen, and uh, so that when visitors come down there, we can show them where these things were, and storyboards. Y'all all know what storyboards are, I'm sure, so that they can read the story. And we hope that we will be on the list for the Revolutionary War Tour because of Patrick's uh, involvement in the war. Thank you so much for listening to me.